Miss Good, we're here tonight to test the validity of democracy. In case you're not aware, in a democracy, if 51 people out of 100 vote that the other 49 should commit suicide, then in fact they should do that. Mm -hmm. And to show you that we are serious, my assistant is going to um, give you some background information. Last year at the performance opened, Dr. Jack and Rituals passed out Kentucky Fried Chickens for the audience to eat. Then as they were eating, chopped the head off a live chicken. In October in Columbus, Dr. Jack and I released a poison gas canister, then exited and blocked off all the doors so the audience could not leave. They were left to contemplate their fate. In Dayton in November, Dr. Jack and I passed out $5 bills to the audience. They were then given the option to keep them or to burn them to free their souls from economic suppression. <laughs> America is a violent nation. In April 1970, I was shot in a land dispute over my grandfather's land and another family. The bullet went right here, entered here, a 38 Special. It came out right there. The access cars are always larger than the entrance cars. And in 1964, I took this picture of my best friends and myself. We later all became Vietnam War veterans. <clears throat> While we were in the war, none of us were injured. But when we got back, Fred, he was shot and killed. We don't know why and, and what, what caused it in uh, 1991. And Milton, his wife committed suicide. She shot herself in the bathroom uh, in about 1980. And myself, on the other side, as I've already told you, I was shot in 1970. And among, among these people, there were friends that we had that are not in the picture. One of them is Ellis Phelan. He was found dead on a railroad track. It's believed that his cousins killed him and laid him there and let the train run over him. So there's not be any evidence. And Johnny Phelan. He was found shot dead in his automobile. His girlfriend was crying, but she was acquitted. But later she was shot in a drive-by shooting in a bar in Detroit. And Jimmy Allen, he died in a violent car, car crash in 1993. When I got out of the Army in 1967, I fell in love with Sherry Angler. And I gave her her first camera. She later became a widely published photographer and um, uh, a, an art teacher, art photography teacher in college level. She either was killed by her husband or she either or committed suicide on December 20th, 1993. So tonight we get to vote to see how democracy works for a murder suicide. If you vote to where you want the murder suicide, then I'm going to kill my assistant and then kill myself. To show you that we are, that we mean business, we're going to drink each other's blood. <laughs> These are castration knives from animals. Somebody might be voting the other way. You may be. You may end up those uh, those 49 instead of that 51 someday. So you better vote in a democracy. We don't have very many, but I see a few. One. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we 
got to see the hands for the others so we know that you're really with us on this democracy. Now, those that do not want me to kill them, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to party to celebrate the, um, the triumph of democracy. So while these people are serving you, I need to tell you about um, another time that democracy was involved. It was in the 1970s. There was a serious attempt to make the leg hole trap illegal. This is a leg hole trap. And according to some, it was contributing to a contributing to a cruel and inhumane world. When my dad, when I was a kid, my dad would set these traps in the potato bin to catch the rats because the rats were too smart to be caught in a regular trap. And in the same year that I was born, I had a first cousin. I was born the same year, Catherine Bowman. The winter of 1944, on Plymouth St. Merle, went heard her crying in the crib. They went into the bedroom and to the crib, and she'd been eaten alive by rats. There was a half a dozen or so on her, so they killed the rats. But as she was a teenager, she was always delighted in showing us her missing ear parts, where the rats ate them when she was an infant. And when she was, uh, uh, she always wore thick glasses. She wore these thick glasses, they said, because the rats were eating at her eyes when they got to her. Okay, um, the Lego trap is still legal, these 20 years later. In the 70s, when I was involved in this, there was a, I was a League of, League of Ohio Sportsman Southwestern Vice President. And I was involved in keeping the Lego trap legal. And the, um, at that time, there was a newspaper article being circulated among the hunters specifically about a Cleveland <laughs> city being eaten alive by rats. So I'm aware that this is for real because I have my real cousin Catherine and I know it's for real. The rats will eat people a lot. But anyway, democracy tri triumph there. So we're going to continue the party here and get on with our celebration of democracy.